All right, this is day 67. And today I spent some time feeding my soul. And I did that by um, going to agapelive.com and connecting with uh, Reverend Michael Beckwith and his wonderful live streaming services today. And it was just wonderful to feast on his teaching, his education, his inspiration, his insight, his guidance, his clarity, because it helped me continue to raise my vibration. It helped me to continue to solidify my new foundation. It helped me stand in my new vibrational alignment. So what happened for me today in my meditation practice, which was, you know, no coincidence that it came up in one of the uh, services today with Reverend Michael had to do with the victim because as been as I've been sharing with you these these videos are taking on a new tone because I'm in a new place and as I'm becoming more and more aware by the very nature of sitting and strengthening the skill to observe and allowing the side effects of meditation to take hold which include the uh, disentanglement of myself with my thoughts the release of the identification of myself with my thoughts and this journey back away from the thoughts sitting and observing them as they are realizing that that's not who I am all these stories all these patterns of thinking all these methods of uh, protection and survival are coming up and so today what came up for me was these subtle remaining victim stories I've always prided myself on uh, having cleared myself of the victim consciousness and to a great extent I have however with a new definition and a new understanding of what the ego is I have been seeing more into my own ego than ever before and I'm seeing the ways in which my ego has kept me separate from myself. I'm seeing the ways my own ego has kept me like at a distance and almost like at war with myself, fighting against my, myself, fighting against my own identities and various personalities. It's really, it's really quite extraordinary. And I have these lingering victim stories, these threads that I saw today in a way that was very powerful, very helpful, and very healing. I'm, I'm in a situation right now that can feed the victim story. I, I, I have chosen things right now that, what, if I'm unaware, can be misused to weave the poor me story. Why is this always happening to me story? And I'm waking up to that today, and I am super grateful for that. So today, the theme of this video is the theme of my day. Today I'm handing in my, my victim card. I'm, I'm returning it. I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving it back, okay? Because that is yet another way that I stay tethered to the world outside of myself. That's another way that I fool myself into thinking or believing that anything or anyone outside of me is the source, is the source of my luck, is the source of my success, is the source of my supply, is the source of my love, is the source of my approval, on and on and on and on that list goes. So I'm giving back my victim card today. I'm taking full responsibility for every single activity, action, thought of my life. I am taking full responsibility, I'm taking full accountability, and I am remembering the truth and that is, is that my life is a gift I'm fully sourced it had all it has already been given to me Michael Beckwith said something that was so powerful to me he said you know it's already been given to us our practices help us receive it this is about the receptive mode because you see my situation here in New Jersey is such that I am not quote unquote working a full-time job I'm not really even working a part-time job. The job I'm really working is being in service to my mother. This is something I'm choosing to do right now. I've been away from New Jersey for 25 years. My mom is 86 and a half, and I'm choosing to do this situation. And it's been a bit of a balancing act trying to make this work, 
trying to figure out, well, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do this, right? Going to a few job uh, opportunities yesterday, and of course they want somebody who's going to be here all summer, and I am not. And so this is a powerful opportunity for me to go even deeper, to go even deeper and to realize that if I'm fully sourced already, if in the spiritual world all of my needs are truly met, if, as Esther Hicks says, in my vibrational vortex, everything is 99.9% .9 complete, and the only thing I have to do is to speak the story of it already being in my life, then really, I do have a job. I do have a full-time job. And I'm excited about how the universe is going to bring this into my experience because now I know what my part is. My part is to look beyond the seeming appearance of it not being manifested in my life. My job is to look beyond the numbers in my bank account that are trying to tell me a story of an identity of myself that is not the truth of who I am. My job is to be really clear about what it is I want to experience. My job is to be really clear about what it is that lights me up. My job is to be really clear about what expands me. My job is to be really clear about the leaps I am taking right now today to get this message, my teaching, me out into the world and then to simply move and to simply be in the vibrational alignment of what that is. So I'm open. I am open to all the many ways that financial good is coming into my life. I'm open. I'm open to serving seniors. I'm open to breaking lawns. And I'm also open to sitting in the silence long enough to feel deeply in my bones deep this spiritual truth that all my needs are met. That's what I think is so cool about Jesus. Whether you think he's a real, a real thing or, 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 or a character in a story, doesn't matter. What's so interesting about Jesus, man, is that he was lined up. He was so lined up, he didn't have a purse. He didn't need things because he truly felt in his bones his oneness with all that is. He was in alignment with all that had already been given to him. And anytime he needed something, it was just there because his consciousness was already there. I'm fascinated by that. And to a great extent, I've designed my life to prove that in, through, and around, and as my life. And right now, I'm also excited about this thing we call money. I'm excited about generating enough income to share with my family. I'm excited about generating enough income to give away to my friends and other people that I know who are also needing some support. I'm excited about generating income to give it away, to, to create scholarships, to do whatever else I can do to help lift the vibration of humanity to the truth of who we really are. So today is a really good day and I'm really glad I put the oxygen mask on myself first today and I'm really glad that how I felt today was my primary focus. So, my hope for you is that you realize that how you feel is your creative journey. Your feelings are the most powerful part of the creation process because feelings are the creative juice of that which is manifested. And if 99.9% .9 of all your good is already done, what story are you telling? Are you telling the story of that which is already done even though you can't see it? Are you playing that game or are you playing the other game where you're looking out into the world of effects and telling that story? Telling the story of lack, telling the story of limitation, telling the story of not enoughness. Which vibrational story are you telling? What is your vibrational address? Oh, that's a good, t that's a good title for my next talk. Today's video is already taken. This is day 67.